Hello, people. Can you hear me? Hello, people. Can you hear me? Please put a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, thank you very much. So this is a session that can help you understand certain things about how to handle a picture and how to answer MCQs based on the pictures. This is just the introduction. Just give me 30 seconds to finish this. I'm Dr. Menakshi Sundaram AS and MBA's MD and I have 11 years of experience in the field of competitive exams at the highest level of teaching for entrance exams. Now this is an academy. The purpose of having free YouTube sessions in an academy is to showcase how exactly an academy can help you in your preparations in the long run. Now, what are the things that you get? Daily, you'll be getting daily live classes. If at all, you prescribe and subscribe for an academy and you'll be having a structured course and live tests and quizzes and you'll have unlimited access to all the videos. Also remember, you'll be having multiple parallel batches going on at the same time, all at the cost of a single price money that you can actually pay. With a single course, you can actually be having access to all these courses and top educators from the nation are teaching you in an academy. And this is the plan for how you can pay for an academy. And for one month, it will be 4,500. As you increase the number of the months of subscription and duration, you can actually get it for even 22,500 at a very, very cheaper price. Okay, and if at all you wish to actually subscribe, please use the code Dr. ASMYT. You'll be having unlimited access to all the free videos and all the free sessions. So let me start with the first picture here. Okay, people, tell me, look at the picture here. Let me know. About the picture, which of the following is true? A, B, C, D. A stands for the name of the disease meaning withering. B means is the sickness of the baby that gets when the new baby comes. C, severe calorie deficiency is seen. D, Leishmania donovani is the causative organism. What do you think is the right answer? Hello, Rahul Soni. Yes, can you give me an answer, people? Among the following, which is the right answer? Is it A, B, C or D? can choose whichever answer you would feel like seeing. Give me an answer, then we'll discuss what exactly is the right answer. Any answer would be fine. Okay, Barnidharan says it is C. Okay, anybody else with an answer? Rahul Soni, the next, the next session will be on 22nd, 6.30 p.m. The quiz is on, the Menti.com quiz, the next session will be on 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Okay, everybody is saying C, Kalai says B. Excellent Kalai, anybody else with an answer? Mohammed Azharuddin says C, Mohit Kanjaria says C, ABCD XYZ all are saying C. Okay, understood. All of you are saying it is C. Okay, good going. Now, Nisha Singh is saying it's B. Bharat Kumar Ji is also saying it is B. Okay, ABCD XYZ is asking whether it is protein energy malnutrition. Good question it is. It is technically a protein energy malnutrition. This is a case of protein energy malnutrition. Now, this is the place where I try to integrate microbiology with that of biochemistry. Look at this. The option D can slightly put some kind of doubts in the minds of your people. Leishman and Novana is the causative organism. Now, if at all such a question comes up, you will be able to look at this particular area, zone, the abdomen. Remember, I'll use another slideshow here. In case of leishmaniasis, let's discuss very clearly. In case of leishmaniasis, the most important thing that you have to notice is massive splenomegaly. Massive splenomegaly. In case of leishmaniasis, you notice massive splenomegaly. Why do I say, why do I keep on repeating the word massive? Because the biggest splenomegaly, the biggest splenomegaly that can happen in the whole of infectious conditions happens in case of leishmaniasis. It means the leishmania will be found as amastigotes. The leishmania can be found as 
amastigotes in case of your macrophages. When the macrophages are increasing in size and number, when the macrophage increase in size and they increase in number, in both the situations you'll be having spleen increasing in size. That is the macrophage is supposed to capture the organism. When they capture, they have to increase in size because of the entry of the organism. At the same time to capture more and more organisms, you have to have more and more amount of macrophages to be divided. So because of increase in size and number of the macrophages, the splenomegaly happens. And that splenomegaly can be seen just like what you are saying in this kind of picture. Now I am going to erase all the annotations I have written here, both in this picture and this picture. Watch very carefully. Here, in case of Leishmaniasis also, you are capable of finding such a kind of picture. But the difference is, look at the upper limb and look at the lower limb. You have the tendencies of malnutrition. You have the tendencies of malnutrition. And this abdominal cavity, if they specifically mention, if they specifically mention that you are looking at, if they specifically mention you are looking at spleen alone, only then your thought process will go towards leash mania. But they are not mentioning it as spleen. They have shown you a distended abdomen from the side. That would mean to say you might be looking at a concept called as ascites. And please tell me people, if it is ascites, what kind of deficiency will be more common? Is it in case of ascites, what kind of deficiency will be more common? Is it the protein or the calories people? You can try giving an answer. In case of ascites, what do you think is more commonly deficient? Excellent. Female Buffet and Gopikashri, you got the right answer. It would be protein deficiency. And which protein do you think about? You think about albumin. Remember, albumin can be deficient. Now, what are the different kind of questions that comes to your mind when we speak about albumin less? You think about decreased albumin. You think about the concept of ascites. Then you can think of three major organs failing you. One can be congestive cardiac failure. The second can be renal failure, where you can have nephrotic syndrome leading to renal failure. You can have hepatic failure. In all the three conditions, there is a very good possibility of having low levels of your osmotic tendency. So, ascites can be seen. Accumulation of fluid can be happening. You will be able to see edema. But the most important thing that you have to understand is malnutrition also can play a very important role. And this malnutrition can be protein excess. Remember, if protein is actually going for a deficiency, severe deficiency, then it will be called as quashiaka. And in case of quashiaka, remember, you will be having protein deficiency. In case of marasmus, you will be having energy deficit. In case of marasmus, you will be having energy deficit. I repeat my words. In case of quashiaka, you have protein deficit. In case of marasmus, you will have energy deficit. So, you tell me people, if it was marasmus, then which property in the given picture will not be predominant? People, if I am saying it is marasmus, if it is marasmus, excellent Barney, then first abdomen, then liver, you are saying, hi Sesha Gopalan, I am asking you a very simple question. Tell me, if I say this is marasmus, in the given picture, which part will not be seen predominantly? They will frame a picture in such a way, which property will not be seen predominantly? If it is marasmus, which part of the picture will not be seen predominantly, people? Excellent. No, no, no. Edema can be seen. Mark my words. Edema can be seen. If it is marasmus, edema is possible. Edema is possible. But ascites is not predominant. Excellent people. Ascites is not predominant if the situation says it is marasmus. So now you understand what is marasmus. What is marasmus? Marasmus means withering. That is continuous catabolism happens. Can you any of you tell me why catabolism is high in case of marasmus? Excellent people, all of you are correct. That is, abdominal distension is not the predominant thing and ascites is not predominant. But catabolism is very high in case of marasmus. So the name of the disease means, the meaning of the word marasmus is withering. From one picture, you should be able to understand everything based on the questions also. Look at the theory here. Withering is the word I am saying, is the original meaning of the word marasmus. Tell me, why catabolism is more in case of marasmus? Why catabolism is more in case of marasmus? 
Anybody? Starvation of both proteins and carbohydrates are present. Why catabolism is high means the fuel is lesser. Good answer, Haridev Krishnan. Haridev Sankar, you will be having fuel less, right? So, you will require catabolism. That is, bigger anabolic substances will be coming down by breakdown. You will be having protein breakdown. You will be having lipid breakdown. The breakdown end products will be supplying fuel for the person to have a normal life. This is what I want you to understand. So, if I say withering is an important component of this particular disease, then this does not actually match with the ascites given here. So, option A is absolutely wrong. Now, look at option D. Because there is splenomegaly, just because there is a splenomegaly, it doesn't mean you will be having extraordinarily cachexic kind of body. So, it is not leishman donovanite. Now, think about it. If I say option A is wrong, then automatically option C is also wrong. Because I said it is not marasmus. Now, that brings us to option B. So, for those people who gave me answer B, you are absolutely good about this. Tell me, what is the meaning of the word kwashiorkor? The kwashiorkor's original meaning is that, excellent people. The kwashiorkor's meaning is that, the sickness that a particular baby gets when the new baby comes. That is, if a mother has given rise to, a, that is, giving rise to another child, and there is an already existing child, because all the nutrition will be given to the newborn child, the older child will not be having enough amount of proteins and the milk also will not be sufficient. Remember, whenever they speak about milk, mother's milk, it is not only rich in lactose, it is also important for proteins. So remember, protein deficiency can be very severe if mother is not giving the milk for the first child just because the second child is born. This is the meaning of the word kwashiorka. So, based on one picture, you should be able to come back to different kinds of concepts. Now, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you don't have any questions, let me go to the next picture. I want you to understand how to handle picture-based questions. My concept here is to help you handle picture-based questions. What are the other things that you can notice about the child? The child is not having any kind of abnormal phases. For a given African child, this is the right kind of face that you see and the right kind of skull that you see. The skull is not abnormal. It may be slightly elongated but not abnormal. The abdomen is distended with ascites but you are looking at cachexia. Very serious cachexia is seen. Okay, so if you have no questions, let me go to the next question. Okay, now look at this. We are speaking about the concept called as transcription. Look at the picture. You are having RNA polymerase enzyme. You are having RNA polymerase enzyme. And this is the sigma factor. This enzyme has two alpha subunits and two beta subunits. Now there is something referred to as X. X is seen inside this particular box. After X is actually binding, RNA polymerase is having distorted conformation. Now, based on this picture, with respect to the previous picture, the drug X is which one? Please give me an answer, whether it is A, B, C or D. Yes, Mohit Kanjariya, Dr. D, Amirtha, Kalai B, Mohit Kanjariya, Abhishek Kanango, everybody is correct. Very good. Give me the answer for this question. With respect to previous picture, the drug X is which one? Excellent. So, Saran Shagarwal, Haridev Shankar, Purni, Surendra, Abhishek Kanango, everybody has given me the right answer. The drug is rifampicin. Now, let's go back to the picture here. Excellent Gopi Krish. Barnidharan, it is rifampicin. It is not uh, D. Now, look at this. I am going to erase the annotations for your benefit. Okay. Now, look at this. You have the two DNA strands present here. And DNA strands are complementary to each other. Now, if I take this as the template strand, using this template strand, I will be able to generate an RNA. So, can you notice here, this is the RNA that is coming out of the particular RNA polymerase. Because what is a polymerase? A polymerase helps in polymerization. Polymerization means what? It is trying to add nucleotides. Remember, be it a DNA polymerase or an RNA polymerase. Polymerization means addition of nucleotides. Addition of nucleotides. 
when I use the word polymerization in case of polymerase enzymes with respect to genetics, polymerization means addition of nucleotides. If I use the word it is an RNA polymerase, then I am generating RNA nucleotides as a sequence. If I say DNA polymerase, I am trying to generate a DNA. Now look at this, there are certain other enzymes called as DNA dependent RNA polymerase. Now this enzyme that we speak here is the same as DNA dependent RNA polymerase. And this DNA dependent RNA polymerase will be running across the particular strands of DNA. And please remember, can any of you tell me the speed with which the polymerase travels across the DNA is referred to as what? Anybody here? The speed with which the enzyme is traveling across the DNA is referred to as what? Can any of you tell me? The speed with which the enzyme is traveling along this particular area is referred to as what? Anybody for that matter? I am saying RNA polymerase or beta DNA polymerase. I am either generating an RNA or a DNA from a strand that is you will be using a particular template. On the template the enzyme will be running. The speed with which it keeps on adding the nucleotides is referred to as what? If you do not know it is okay. The right word is processivity. Please remember this for the rest of your life. It is referred to as processivity. It means the speed with which an enzyme is traveling along the DNA strand and it keeps on adding the nucleotides. Remember that processivity can be blocked by rifampicin. How? You have two alpha subunits, two beta subunits. The right kind of question that you have to raise here would be the fact that in case of RNA polymerase, look at this, this is the protein. That is, you can see the particular drug which is looking like a modified W. This modified W is coming and binding to the beta strand because of which the space between the two strands has been nullified. You will not be able to have the RNA polymerase coming out of it. So, the processivity of this particular enzyme has been brought down drastically. The processivity of the enzyme has been brought down drastically. That is why the RNA polymerase is not able to function. Now, let us look at the concepts here. What was amantadine capable of doing? Amantadin is helpful as an antiviral agent. Mark my words, amantadin is helpful as an antiviral agent and it is extremely useful in case of influenza infections. And what is the role of antiviral agent called as amantadin? It blocks the M2 protein. It blocks the M2 protein that is important for the virulence factor. The M2 protein is found in the influenza virus and this is important for opening up of the ion channels. Opening of ion channels. From one question, we should be able to learn a lot of diverse information. That's why I'm telling you, amantadine is an antiviral agent. It is not related to the bacteria right now. This amantadine is capable of blocking the M2 protein. That M2 protein is a virulence factor and it opens the ion channels, right? Because of which the influenza virus becomes less and less virulent. Can you tell me, dactinomycin binds to what? What is the mechanism of dactinomycin people? Can any of you who is online tell me, dactinomycin is helpful for what? Dactinomycin is nothing but actinomycin D. Dactinomycin is nothing but actinomycin D. Do you know the mechanism of actinomycin D? Actinomycin D, anybody knows the mechanism? Okay, let me tell you, dactinomycin was the first, mark my words, this is an MCQ, it was the first antibiotic to find therapeutic application in tumor chemotherapy. What will dactinomycin do? Imagine if these are the DNA strands, if I mark one DNA strand as the template strand, to the template strand of the DNA, the actinomycin D will come and bind. This actinomycin D will come and bind. 
from which the RNA polymerase will not happen. So actinomycin D is also capable of inhibiting transcription. Actinomycin D is also capable of inhibition of transcription. Excellent. Kalaipi, that's a very good answer. Intercalation of DNA strands can happen. Arni Prasanna, you're also right. Anti-cancer. And Gangadharan, you're also correct. Gupika Shri, think about it. You are having this actinomycin D coming and binding to the DNA strand. Because it is coming and binding to the DNA strand, you will not be able to. You will not be able to have the transcription happening. What is the difference here? I'm going to erase the annotations I have used here. I'm going to erase the annotations I used here. Look at this. Here, the, the drug called as rifampicin is binding to the RNA polymerase enzyme. Because it is binding to the enzyme, that enzyme is not able to go along the DNA. While actinomycin D is capable of binding to the DNA, because the DNA is having a huge blockade here, the enzyme is not able to go forward. That is the major difference between that of actinomycin and rifampicin. So that is why picture-based questions are very important. You have to know where exactly the picture is trying to point towards. Here, the X is actually the drug itself. You are looking at the drug. The drug is binding to the beta subunit of the RNA polymerase enzyme. Well, in case of actinomycin, it is binding to the DNA structure. And what is the function of tetracycline? Anybody knows the function of tetracycline, people? The mechanism of tetracycline? Mechanism of action of tetracycline? Anybody knows? Yes, protein synthesis innovation, excellent people, remember, tetracycline starts with the letter T and in case of prokaryotic translation, we start with 70S ribosome, 70 splits into 50S and 30S, 30 is THIRTY, that also starts with T, so tetracycline blocks 30S ribosome, also you can have amino glycosides also binding your Amino glycosides also binding to your 30S ribosome, while chloramphenicol tries to attack your 50S ribosome. So, when we speak about tetracycline, it is a drug that inhibits translation. It's a drug that inhibits translation. Rifampicin and dactromycin will inhibit transcription, while amantadine is a drug that blocks the viral penetration and viral virulence. So, I hope you will be able to understand what exactly is the logic that I am trying to tell you in terms of every single drug. Let's go for the next picture based question. Identify the structure marked as X. This is the structure I want to look for. Is it protein A, protein M, flagella or capsule? Go for it people. Give me any answer, it's fine. Yes, very good answer. Harini Prasanna, Padma Prabhu, Abhishek Kanango. Kanmani Muttaya, very good. Saurabh Sharma, Vishay Kanango, Gopika Shri, good. Priyanka Dharma, yes, give me an answer.
Vicky Khoshal Rajapati Surendra. Can you hear me now? Purni, are you able to hear me now? Okay. Now look at this picture here. We are focusing on this particular picture. You have to identify the marked area which is marked as X. Identify the protein structure that is marked as X. Is it protein A, protein M, flagella or capsule? Yes, what is the answer? Yes, you can try giving an answer. Doesn't matter. Whatever the answer you give me, it's okay. Just let me know what is the answer. Okay, good Pradeep. Padma Prabhu, you say it is protein A. Anybody else with an answer? Okay, A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z is saying B. Uh, Harni Prashna is saying B. Mohammed Azharuddin is saying B. Sesha Gopal is saying C. Excellent. Now, why these kind of image based sessions are very important? Because your knowledge about the theory will be very good. And your understanding of any kind of MCQ will also be good. But what you are seeing in the picture may not exactly go along with your thought process. Look at this. What you are seeing here is neither a flagella. It is not a flagella. It is not a fimbriae. Listen very carefully. It is neither a flagella nor a fimbriae. It is neither a flagella nor a fimbriae. It's a protein that is extending out. And remember, you have a cell wall. Look at the thickness of the cell wall. The cell wall is very thick in this area. And this protein will be having a C-terminus bound inside. Mark my words. It's a C-terminus bound within the cell membrane while the N terminus is the one who is seen outside the area. I hope you are noticing what I am showing here. This is the N terminus. This is the C terminus. C terminus is within the cell membrane while the N terminus is the one that is pointing outwards. Now here I want you to understand if at all you have a flagella, what is the structure that you have to notice in a flagella? If I am going for a microscopic look at the flagella, the flagella will try to make a bore inside the body and it will be using a rotor and a basal body have a rotor and a basal body. That is why it is not a flagella. Mark my words for those people who said C, I am trying to answer why it is not C. Because it is not having a rotor, it is not having a basal body and the flagella will not be very short. Look at the cell wall here. The cell wall of this side, if it is a real flagella, the flagella would be so long and also it will be having a proper attachment to the interior areas of your body. This is actually the one that is struck bound to the strongly bound to the membrane. So remember, this is a protein who is having its C-terminal bound inside while the N-terminal is free. It is not a flagella. At the same time, it is not a fimbriae. If at all you think about a fimbriae, there is a possibility it can be a fimbriae but not technically a complete fimbriae. Look at this. This whole thing can be taken as a fimbriae but it is not a flagella for sure. And why am I not saying that it is always not a fimbriae? There is a possibility that fimbriae can have a straight structure. Sometimes fimbriae can have lightly curved structures. So if I take it as fimbriae, look at this. This is a protein M and the organism is streptococcus. The organism is streptococcus. And why am I saying that? If it is staphylococcus, the protein A will not be letting it outside like this. I am going to erase whatever I have written here. I will rewrite what I have written here. This is not flagella because of the absence of basal body and the rotor. You can have no fimbriae also but there is a possibility it may be a fimbriae because it is coming out straight outside the inner membrane. Now this is protein A. It belongs to streptococcus and if it is belonging to streptococcus the one thing I wanted to know is it is protein M and this protein M is making a very strong concept of that of gram positive wall of the organism called as streptococcus. Excellent Harni Prasanna, that is rings. Yes, correct, Mohammed Azharuddin, M protein along with gram positive outer wall to evade the immune response. Now tell me, what is the mechanism of protein M? Protein M avoids phagocytosis. Protein M avoids phagocytosis. So it is anti opsonizing in nature. So have a look, very good luck at this particular picture. Tell me if you have any questions, I will try to answer your doubts. If you have any questions, please ask me. I will try to answer your questions. Correct, Dr. D. Basal body should be present. Okay, if you have no more question, let me go to the next question here. Look at the picture. 
for the picture which of the following drug is not useful for the given situation is it a is it b is it c is it d or is it e okay haridev shankar that's a good question you are asking about protein a protein a is a twin protein of staphylococcus aureus it is always found with coagulase protein a will bind to the fc portion of the antibody remember this is called as fab portion this is called as fc portion protein a will come and bind to the fc portion of the antibody because of which complement factors will not be able to come and bind when the complement factors can't come and bind the complement cascade cannot be activated if cascade is not activated membrane attack complex is not formed if membrane attack complex is not formed a proper attack on the bacteria does not happen so remember protein a is one of the twin proteins along with that of coagulase in the organism called as staphylococcus aureus protein a may be found on the wall of the staphylococcus itself but you will not be able to have a proper demarcation where you see the c terminus and the n terminus c terminus and n terminus speaks about a straight kind of protein and that protein is not protein a it is protein m because of the intense relationship with that of cell wall and it is penetrating deep into the cell membrane while protein a is found superficially protein a is superficial while protein m is actually going deeper inside i hope i have answered the yes i have given why can't it be protein a protein a is superficial protein m can go deeper i hope i have answered the questions of roshan rp and padma prabhu okay let's go for the okay now uh, mbps booster has given me the right uh, answer here which of the following drug is not useful for the given situation now you have given me the right answer it is ophthalmic inhibitor it is also called as neo natal conjunctivitis it is also called as ophthalmia neo natorum ophthalmia neo natorum and if this is the diagnosis then which is not useful for the given situation how did you make the diagnosis you are able to look at the purulent discharge so remember it is a purulent neonatal conjunctivitis then you have to think about a bacterial source it's a proper bacteria which is typical in nature i am trying to help you crack the question one by one based on the picture in this picture you are able to understand it's a neonate at the same time look at the areas here you are looking at the pus pus means pyogenic focus is seen so it cannot be generally a viral infection it has to be a bacterial infection and among bacteria it has to be typical bacteria and because it's a neonate you call it as neonatal conjunctivitis or ophthalmia neonatorum can you tell me the most common organisms capable of causing ophthalmia neonatorum people give me two examples of ophthalmia neonatorum Can you give me two organisms who can mimic or who can cause ophthalmia neonatorum? Excellent. So you are speaking about gonococcus and chlamydia. Very good answer. It can either be a gonococcal infection. or it can be a chlamydial infection now if you have sit in my previous classes i have taken all the plus classes and the special classes also tell me if pus is there if pus is copious in amount who should be more commonly chosen gonococcus or chlamydia if pus is very important and the pus is copious in content whom should i choose first gonococcus or chlamydia excellent so while be choosing gonococcus because gonococcus is more pyogenic than that of chlamydia and in gonococcus it is actually an intracellular organism found inside the neutrophils so here you understand ceftriaxone injection can be given i have seen most of you have given me the right answer called as c and i am telling you why exactly c is the right answer ceftriaxone is the drug of choice in case of gonococcal infection bacitracin can be given can any of you tell me what can bacitracin be doing here bacitracin is not the most effective drug but in which situations bacitracin ointment can be given for bacterial infections anybody excellent padma prabhu good good answer can you tell me where what is the what is the special thing that is offered by bacitracin bacitracin even though it is not the first line drug 
not first line drug but this bacitracin is useful in people who are allergic to penicillin please mark my words allergic to penicillin these are the ones you have to take home at the end of the session so when i think about bacitracin bacitracin is useful in those patients who are allergic to penicillin so these ointments are very effective at the same time look at excellent hernipresin are very good now look at tetracycline tetracycline can be a broad spectrum antibiotic so tetracycline can be effective against chlamydia first tetracycline can be effective against chlamydia first and it also has a very important role in gonococcus also because it is an organism who has a very wide spectrum because it has a wide spectrum it can deal with both the possible causes and can any of you tell me can any of you tell me then excellent not because of just penicillin resistance is because of penicillin allergy also if it is penicillin resistant there is a very good chance it can be bacitracin resistant also because penicillin and bacitracin are cell wall synthesis inhibitors right so think about the logic here i have told you why tetracycline is used can any of you tell me what is the role of atropine sulfate in this given situation can any of you tell me what is the role of atropine sulfate Can any of you tell me what is the role of atropine sulfate? Excellent people, Karmani Muthiya, you have given me the right answer. It is the best answer you can give as an ophthalmology student if you are in ophthalmology. Atropine sulfate's ultimate role is when there is a corneal involvement. To avoid, yes, excellent, Purni, to reduce the cause midriasis and reduces the adhesions and also it can relax the ciliary muscles, excellent. So, please remember, ophthalmia, ninitrum is an emergency situation. And that emergency situation, I'm going to tell you one simple concept. Listen very carefully. What kind of drug am I supposed to use? Either I use a wide or a broad spectrum antibiotic, which can take care of all the possible organisms, or at least use an antibiotic, which can take care of at least two bacteria that are capable of attacking. At least two bacteria that are capable of causing ophthalmic neuritism. Now look at this. There is something called as interstitial keratitis in case of congenital syphilis so when i put the patient on ceftrioxone ceftrioxone can take care of gonococcus and treponema pallidum ceftrioxone can take care of gonococcus and treponema pallidum while tetracycline can take care of gonococcus at the same time chlamydia so remember whenever i choose a drug either it should be a broad spectrum antibiotic if it is not available at least it should be catering to two of the given organism in the given picture that is how you can go for treatment of ophthalminiterum if you don't treat at the right time it can lead to blindness now this is an example of dna binding motif and if it is a dna binding motif i want you people to find out what is x notice where the x is tell me what x is Excellent Harshendra Gaur Patil, excellent Mohammad Azharuddin, Abhishek Kanungu, very good, Nagavardhani, this is very good answer, Purni, very good, Haridhi Shankar, everybody is given the right answer, excellent. Tell me, what is the function, what is the X? Find what is X. Anybody for that matter? What is X? I'm just waiting for your answer. What is X? Okay, Shubhendra, it is not his tone. See, here you have his. This his is histidine. And here you have cis. Cis is cysteine. And cysteine is an amino acid, histidine is an amino acid. They are coming through the protein structures. Okay, Roshan RP is saying it is iron. Excellent. I have given you the clue. It's a DNA binding motif. What do you mean by a DNA binding motif? Think about it. For example, I have an enzyme called as DNA polymerase. If I try to draw DNA polymerase like this, I am looking at this space. 
this active space where the DNA can come and bind. So those proteins who are handling the DNA should be able to have that is those enzymes who are proteins who are handling the DNA will have an active space which can link with the DNA. Okay, uh, Arun Havanur is saying zinc, Purni is saying proline hydroxylase, Mohammed Azhar is saying nucleosome you are guessing, Dr. D is saying zinc, Sudarshan is saying zinc, ABC Wise is saying zinc. Yes, when one person says zinc, everybody has the idea of thinking about the zinc. That's a very good trend, that is very good. Listen very carefully. What I'm saying here is you're looking at a DNA binding motif. The binding of proteins to DNA is through structural motifs such as zinc finger motif, leucine zipper motif, helix turn, helix loop. All these things are super secondary structures. I repeat, they're called as super secondary structures. We are focusing on enzymes. Those enzymes who are proteins and these enzymes are the ones who will act on DNA. When these enzymes have to act on DNA, they will come in contact with DNA. Which kind of enzymes will come in contact with DNA? Or those enzymes who are making contact with DNA, what kind of structure they should have? They should have a super secondary structure which are acceptable for the DNA. Which are acceptable for the DNA. This question and this picture may look very difficult for you, but I am going to erase all the annotations. Look at it. I gave you the clue. Identify X in the given picture. What are the things you have to know? There are two anti-parallel beta sheets. What you are seeing here is anti-parallel beta sheet. One beta sheet is going this way, one beta sheet is going this way. And they are actually making contact with that of alpha helix. So when beta sheet and alpha helix are coming together, think about a super secondary structure or a tertiary structure. And if at all it's a super secondary structure, when they mention the residues called as cysteine, you can sometimes have four cysteine residues or four histidine residues, or you can have two cysteine plus two histidine residues, which are trying to make contact with the central portion called as zinc. And when the zinc is present, it looks like this, which is called as zinc finger motif. It looks like a finger where the DNA can come and bind. Now this is the zone where DNA can come and bind. This is called as zinc finger motif. Now let me show you the other types of super secondary structures. What you're hearing here is helix turn helix. What is helix turn helix? Look at this. I draw alpha helix here. I draw one more alpha helix here. So this is called as alpha helix to alpha helix with a small turn. It is not even a loop. It is just a turn. Now watch it very carefully. Here one is an alpha helix. 2 is an alpha helix, 3 is an alpha helix and all the alpha helix has been drawn as a cylinder. What am I trying to show here? In this picture based discussion, I am trying to help you understand that the helix need not be always drawn like this. When they draw a cylinder like this, the cylinder is also an indication for speaking about helix here. So we have three helix here. Between the helix, you are looking at turns. This is called as helix turn helix family and the DNA can come and bind here. Now look at another DNA binding motif. This is referred to as the helix being here, the helix being here, you have three helixes and you have contacts here. Now look at zinc finger motif. In this area, I want to notice you have an alpha helix that is, can you tell me where the alpha helix is? This cylinder is alpha helix, this red color cylinder is alpha helix and this kind of green color cylinder is also alpha helix but these arrow marks that you see in green color are called as beta sheets. Between the alpha helix and the beta sheet, this structure will be called as the zinc. This is called as zinc finger motif. And one more thing is you have leucine zipper. It means this is an alpha helix. This is an alpha helix. Both the alpha helixes are coming together in such a way as if they have a zipper action. And in that particular helices, the particular proteins secondary structure is filled with the amino acid called as leucine, which is called as leucine zipper. Now let me show you a better picture here. This is again al helix turn helix area. This is an alpha helix. This is an alpha helix and this is the turn we are looking at. If at all I make a sharp turn, it's called as loop. If I have this kind of binding, that is called as a turn. So I have a helix turn helix motif here and here I have a zinc finger motif here. The red color structures you are seeing here, the red colored circles that you are seeing here would be the zinc and between this you have to understand, listen very carefully, in helix turn helix only alpha helix is present. But in zinc finger motif, alpha helix is also present, 
beta sheet is also present and between the alpha helix and the beta sheet you will be having turns and between those areas you will be having the zinc. Now look at this portion here. The zinc is the center. You have a cysteine cysteine residue, histine histidine residue here where the bond is between that of a beta pleate and the alpha helix and that is the place where the recognition happens. Recognition helix means the place where the DNA can come and bind. This is called as zinc finger motif. Now look at the loosened zipper here. Loosened zipper is the name given. Here it is coiled. Here it is uncoiled. Here it is uncoiled, here it is coiled. Between the two alpha helices, you will be having the most important amino acid dealing them would be the leucine. When the leucine separate, it is like a zip opening up. That is what is called as leucine zipper motif. Now this is called as helix loop helix. Here it is helix turn helix. The difference between A and D is, in A you have helix turn helix. Here you have helix loop helix. After every single helix, you are having a proper turn and that turn can be seen as proper loop. Here it is mere turn, here it is a proper loop with a 360 degrees turning or a 180 degrees turning. So my simple point here is, if at all you are looking at these kind of motifs, motif is a name given for secondary structures. I mean super secondary structures. Motif is a name given for super secondary structures and they will be having DNA binding families. They come under a DNA binding motif called as a secondary superstructure superfamily. And we have discussed five major picture based questions with the help of MCQs. All these pictures were seen yesterday. Now I hope you will have actually used it a lot and we will be having a lot of free live classes as free special sessions and we will also be having plus batch courses for this. You can use the referral code Dr. ASMYT and if you have any question you can raise your questions in the comment section. I will try to answer your questions and for those people who have been very patient to look at the class thank you very much for listening to me. I will wait for another 20 seconds if you have any questions. If there are no questions, let us stop the class. Thank you very much.